could there exist a master blueprint from ancient times that is determining the events of modern times? Is it possible that an ancient mystery lies behind current events, including the rise and fall of leaders, governments, and even the presidents of the United States? Could a blueprint from the ancient Middle East actually foretell the events of our day so precisely it even reveals when these events must take place, down to the year, and even the exact days. The master blueprint in the paradigm even revealed the date of 9-11, years before it took place. From Jonathan Kahn, the selling author of The Harbinger, The Mystery of the Shemitah, and The Book of Mysteries, comes the paradigm, the ancient blueprint that holds the mystery of our times. In his most explosive book to date, Jonathan Kahn opens up the master blueprint that is now unfolding before our eyes. How has the paradigm already affected your life, and how will it impact your future? Khan takes you on a journey from Middle Eastern landscapes to Washington, D.C., from ancient palaces to the White House, from mysterious priests and priestesses to ruthless kings and queens, from gods and goddesses to prophets and holy men. What does the mystery reveal about what lies ahead, and what is the warning it contains? You will be stunned and amazed at the revelations contained in Khan's most explosive book yet. One thing is certain, once the veil is removed, you will never see the world in the same way again. Find out more when you read Jonathan Kahn's The Paradigm, the ancient blueprint that holds the mystery of our times, available wherever fine books are sold. Welcome to Prophecy in the News. I hope you enjoyed that clip we just showed. It's mm -hmm. about the paradigm. Our guest is the author, teacher of that, Jonathan Kahn. Welcome, brother. Great to be here, Kevin, always. Well, just for those uh, who might not have uh, seen our other shows, yeah, you, um, yeah. we're going to recap in a minute, but yes. just to acquaint our audience with you, you're an author, pastor, uh, messianic, Jewish rabbi. We could call you a lot of great call things. Call me whatever people, and people do. They call me anything, and <laughs> not always great. <laughs> well, we, we love you and appreciate Thank you, you. Thank and uh, we feel the anointing of God on you. Thank Give you us a recap Thank about you. this fascinating paradigm. Yeah, the paradigms, uh, what, what we're, we're talking, that I would sum it up first in a nutshell, that if, if this is, we're talking about a master blueprint from the Bible that lies behind, opens up, reveals, um, uh, pinpoints everything that's happening in our time. I mean, the, the overall flow, the key events of our lifetime, uh, what has been, what is, and we're going to talk about what is to come, um, mm -hmm. It gives not only the what, but gives the dates of when things happen. And in some cases, I mean, we talk about years, we talked about dates, even hours, like 9-11, we talked in the other one, that it actually pinpointed years before you could have pinpointed this. You could, if you knew the paradigm, you could have charted 9-11 down to the day. Um, the leaders of our time, uh, that each leader is following this ancient prototype leader. There's one that matches the other one, and it explains them. It, it's where, what they do, their decisions, and even gives the time that they will have on the national stage. We saw with, with Bill Clinton, we saw that he's following the paradigm of uh -huh. Ahab, and we saw that it gives the exact period of time that he will have on the national stage. We saw with Barack Obama, it follows the, the paradigm of the man called King Joram, Gives the exact period of time, 12 years for Obama, 12 years for Joram, thousands of years ago. Hillary Clinton, we, we followed, uh, we saw that she's, the paradigm, the mystery is that of Jezebel. And, and we're even going to get to the, the days of the queen in, in a moment. You know, but how, how everything follows exactly, it is followed like one step. We, what we did is we, we started about, we, we talked about the fall of America, right. the big picture. But then we saw this accelerated period where we're in now, now that began about a quarter century ago with the culture war. And that begins with the Clintons. But everything is following in order. Even Osama bin Laden's in there. Even the time that he would be assassinated. Everything is in there. And it mm. took us up to finally, we got up to this showdown point. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. We saw something called the goddess. Where actually, where you know with Jezebel, she worshipped the, the goddesses and, and brought them into the palace. Well, we even saw with the White House, we saw these, these things going on in the days of the Clinton. Clintons, where this also you had leader, high priestesses of goddess worship in the White House conducting sessions. Um, and we're going to now take it to where it's going to go up to Donald Trump and where we are right now. But the thing is that it comes to this crossroads where the nation is going to go one way or the other. It's either going to head to total apostasy and religious freedom is going to be over or there's going to be uh, there's going to be a surprise. Well, in with Israel, there's a surprise. America was on this on this juncture, on the precipice where with this election, if it went the other way, 
You could say goodbye to religious freedom, goodbye to much else. But there was a surprise in ancient Israel, surprise here, mm-hmm. and the surprise was called Jehu. Jehu is the mystery of Donald Trump. The Jehu, warrior, you he's a warrior, he's a fighter, he's not a politician, he's wild, he's out of, he looks like he's out of control, Donald Trump, but he's used <laughs> of God, he's anointed of God to, 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 to begin a race, and the race is described in the Bible as crazy, and it goes, and it's going to take him to the throne, it's going to take him to a showdown, where we left last time, right. we had a showdown between the warrior, Jehu, and the former first lady, Jezebel, well, in America, we had the warrior, Donald Trump, and the former first lady, Hillary Clinton, showdown, Every poll said it was over for the, for the Republicans, over, yet the paradigm said that the warrior was going to win. And that's exactly what happened. And that's where we, we got that we, 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 we ended with the downfall of the former first lady. And I'm talking about Jezebel or, or as you talk about Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. And then, and the, and the, the triumph of the warrior, Donald Trump. But he hasn't taken the throne yet. And that's where we're going to, we're going to go to where it's going to take us all the way to where we are. And we'll, we'll even touch on the future. Boy. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot. Well, uh, I just want to follow um, kind of a, a question that comes to mind. What is the ninth of Tammuz? Mm. The mystery there. Okay. Well, well, we we spoke about when we 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 talked about Joram, and that was the mystery of Obama, and it and 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 when you read the Bible about King Joram, he's not only following the ways of of the of Ahab, which here would be the Clintons, but he also is it, it, his, his you you can you can't miss it. He his his reign is linked to hostility to God's ways, and that's okay. what you see in Obama again and again. The temperament of Joram is cooler, so you don't. But it's a, but it's a it's a host, continual hostility to that. And during his 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 reign, something happened in the ancient calendar of Israel. Uh, when judgment came, the enemy breached the walls of the city of Jerusalem, and and once they breached the defensive walls, it was over. Judgment was going to come. It was it was hold those first walls are hold, holding back the enemy. Well, once that happened, judgment was going to come. Well, the day they breached the walls was the ninth of Tammuz. The ninth of Tammuz became a a day of mourning in Jewish history for 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 three thousand years almost. I mean, two and a half thousand years. Mourning the day that the hedge is removed mm-hmm. and judgment can come. Well, in the reign of Obama, um, there was a day the ninth of Tammuz fell on a particular day, fell on on June twenty sixth, two thousand fifteen. June twenty sixth, two thousand fifteen, the ninth of Tammuz, day of the hedge removed is the day that the Supreme Court struck down the hedge of marriage in America, was mm. removed, removed that judgment can come. That was the day it all happened. And that was like the peak day of, of hostility to God, but that's the day of judgment. My goodness. So, you know, so, yeah, yeah. So, so now, now we, we left off with, uh, with the fall of the First Lady, former First Lady, and the rise of the warrior. But here's a question now. We've got to ask the question, because we did it with... With a, with Clinton, with Ahab, I'm sorry, with Bill Clinton, we found that exact time on the stage matched the mm-hmm. was, was was determined by Ahab's time, and we saw Obama's time on the state the national stage was determined by Joram, and the same time, but Hillary Clinton's a little different. Hillary Clinton is the first lady. So, how long was she on the national stage? Well, she came to the national stage in 1979 when her husband won, became the governor of Arkansas. She became the first lady of Arkansas. Mm-hmm. That lasted first lady until she became the first lady of America. Lasted until 2001. So you got 1979, 2001. So that that first lady, Hillary Clinton on the stage, with her husband. That was a period of 22 years with her husband. But then she does something unprecedented. She, the first lady goes on and becomes her her own political career. How long was she on the national stage on her own? Well, she was senator for four and four years, eight years. Then she was secretary of state under, with Obama, four years. That's 12 years. Then she retired from public life. For two years, retired. So I'm then came back two years later to run for president for two years on the national stage. Come together, 12 plus 2 becomes 14 years on the national stage. Hillary Clinton. Okay, so now let's go to the Bible. Jezebel, how long was she on the national stage with her husband? 22 years, as in Hillary Clinton. Mm. But then she was on her own. How long was she on her own on the national stage? 14 years, at, same as Hillary Clinton. Everything matches up to Amazing. every single one, every single one, every single one. So now, now um, there's something else here, and that is that that there's a covenant, Kevin. I'm not. I'm preaching to the choir, but but that we we saw that this last election, which shocked everybody, we talked about it last time. Everybody was blown away by it. Nobody expected it, but we saw that the paradigm foretold it. If you take and but. 
was there also another was there could there be an ancient covenant that also determined it and that is there is a ancient covenant 4000 years old that mm. says whatever mm. you do to Israel it says if you curse Israel you'll be cursed if you bless Israel you'll be blessed and but not just that it's it's a covenant of reciprocity what you do to Israel or the Jewish people shall be done to you well a year before the election in America there was an election in Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu was running for re-election. Oh, yeah. But Obama was against that. And actually, Obama, and it was proven, he actually intervened in that election. He supported an organization to try to stop Netanyahu from winning the prime minister. He tried to, he cha he tried to change the outcome of the election and intervene in that election and overturn Netanyahu's legacy. Right. But it didn't work. You know, it was similar to Trump's thing. Everybody was saying that Netanyahu was defeated, defeated, and all of a sudden he won. Okay. But the Abrahamic Covenant says, whatever you do to Israel shall be done to you. So if you intervene in the election of Israel, mm -hmm. God will intervene in the election of your land. If you intervene, you try to change the outcome of Israel's election, God will change the outcome of the election in America. If you try to end Netanyahu's legacy, God will overturn your own legacy. So you want to understand what happened? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. And, and so it, 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 it was, an, it, you know, they were saying, well, there's an intervention. The Russians intervened. The Russians intervened. That's why, it, well, listen, whatever the Russians did, it was, it was, the intervention was a little bit higher. That's right. <laughs> that, that turned this election crazily that nobody expected it. Amazing. That's unbelievable. And this happened uh, as we're filming this. I mean, it happened. We're talking about, you know, we're, we're at the, the year mark here. Um, but now the thing is that, that what happened after, after the warrior defeats the first lady, the former because first lady. This is really where we are now. Yes, yes, and and what happens is the first thing is it's not just that he won the election. He had to he had to go. He he didn't become president until he he went to the capital city and took mm -hmm. the presidency. Well, same thing with Jehu. Jehu wins the election, or I'm sorry, Jehu Jehu wins against the former first lady, and he's actually in the northeastern city with the with the former first lady. That's where Trump and Hitler, they were in, and they were in New York City. But then he turns his attention to New, to Washington D.C. Well, well, Jehu then focuses on Samaria. He's got to get to Samaria, the capital city, to win. I mean, to to take the throne. So, so what was Jehu's agenda? Jehu has an agenda. When he's going to head to the capital city, his agenda is this: he goes there to drain the swamp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's exactly Donald Trump. Where did he go? He says, what's my, what's my policy for, you know, for Washington? I'm going to drain the swamp. And you can read, read what Jehu does. He drains the swamp. He, he, he's there to take out the old and, 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 and cleanse it. Well, on his way, when Jehu is heading down to the capital city, to take the, he, he has an encounter with a man. In the book and in the, in the DVD album, it's, he's called the Holy Man. Mm -hmm. He's a mystical figure. His name is Jehonadab. Mystical figure, and and yet there's not a lot of known about it. But we know from every every commentary is agreed who he was. It's very clear when you read the whole Bible who he was. Jehonadab represents the religious conservatives of the land, and so here's what happens. So Jehu has a meeting with Jehonadab, so he's representing the religious conservatives. Donald Trump, on his way to power, has meetings with who? Religious conservatives, mm -hmm. evangelical Christians. Remember all that? And, and what does Jehu do? Jehu says, you can read it, you can paraphrase it. Jehu says to, to, to them, says to Jehonadab, says, basically, I'm with you. I'm for you. Well, what did Trump say? He said, I'm with you guys. I'm for religious freedom. I'll defend that. I am for life. I'm pro-life. I will, I will speak up for you. That's what he said. Well, that, well then, and then Jehu says to Jehonadab, says, will you be with me? So basically, Trump said, will you be with me? And so Je Je Jehu reaches out his hand. Jehonadab takes his hand and says, you know what? Because the, the alternative is, is the house of Ahab. So he says, listen, uh, you, listen, I'll, I'll be with you. So Jehonadab gets on the chariot. Now you got two people in the chariot. You got the, you got the warrior who's driving crazy. And you have, you've got the holy man. You got, you got, you got Jehonadab. And the, so how, <laughs> and, and think of, I mean, how did this race happen? Trump would not have been elected if it wasn't for the alliance that he made with evangelical Christians. There was no way he would have been. And they literally, they, they come to the capital city together. And when they came there, actually, there were more people, more born-again believers praying uh, at the inauguration of Trump than any other president. I mean, amazing. Mm -hmm. It was unexpected. But not only that, J he literally also makes an alliance, Trump makes an alliance with a particular man 
who is Mike Pence, who is a religious conservative. I mean, literally, they're riding in the chariot together. Literally, and, and, yeah. and you know, and you know, we know something about Jehonadab is that he he abstained from any form of evil, from alcohol and other things like. That. Same thing with Michael Pence. Mike Pence, you know, he the, the media true. attacked him, tried to crucify him because he he seeks to avoid any appearance of evil. He will not be with a woman alone when there's alcohol. Well. That's John and Tab, you know. So even that, even that is part of the part of the paradigm. It's amazing, and so and so here's so they get to the capital city. What happens in the capital city? When he gets to the capital city, the city is divided. I mean, because you have the, you got the old house, you got the old and the new. Well, America was divided. I was in the, I was in. Yeah. The, I spoke at the uh, at Trump's at, at the the inaugural prayer breakfast at, at Trump's hotel on that day, and it was a war zone. I mean, it was literally, a, there were there soldiers, war zone. You had the people, you had Christians gathered all over, and you had, you had abortionists gathered all over, and you had all, all this craziness happening. Well, who were the ones who were most against Jehu? The ones who would be most against were the House of Ahab, that would be the House of Clinton, and it would also be those who were for Baal worship, which would be abortion, the abortion. Mm-hmm. Well, well, Planned Parenthood, they hate Trump. They try to attack him. They had demonstrations and all this stuff, all that. Well, well, when Trump, well, when, I'm sorry, when Jehu went to the capital city, what did he do? The most, the most iconic act that he did, he found the Temple of Baal. The Temple of Baal was built by Ahab. Okay, so it's interesting. When, when, and that relates to Clinton. When Clinton got there, he was the first president in history to champion abortion. He mm-hmm. made the government an apparatus for the abortion industry. He made it, he, you know, Washington became a center for advocating for abortion. So, so, so Ahab built a temple of Baal in the capital city. And so, what, so when Trump went there, he vowed to fight abortion. And, and what Jehu did is he basically, he basically cut off the cult of Baal. He, he said, we're, we're, we're not going to have the government supporting this anymore. Well, that's what Trump has sought to do. The first act he did as president. First act, which really tells you where, and it was the, you look at the first act of Clinton, you look at the mm-hmm. first act of Obama, first, first, the first presidential act that he passed was to, to end what, ha, what Obama and Clinton had done, which was pro-abortion, advocating abortion all over the world, to strike it down. That was the first act. And he sought to do more, and we have to pray that he does. But could there even be, well, let me, let me tell you one other thing. I, I didn't say this, and this is crazy. This is in the realm of crazy, but crazy but true. Jehu was also in a war against witchcraft because he actually says it. He says, I'm against Jezebel because of the witchcraft. That's Baal worship, but it's witchcraft. So you had a war, Jehu and witches. You know, they're against each other. Donald Trump becomes president. What happens? Around the nation and around the world, under the crescent moon, you have gatherings of witches Mm -hmm. casting spells against the new president. Now, that has never happened in American history. Openly, publicly, promoted on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, and and yet it's in the paradigm because it was Jehu. Mm-hmm. The war was Jehu and the witches. So I mean, even that is crazy. But we said he destroyed the temple of Baal. So so we see. We but there's could the, could the temple of Baal actually even could there actually be a temple of Baal that exists from ancient times? The answer is there has been a temple of Baal that existed from ancient times. It survived everything, survived all of history. But the paradigm says when the warrior rises. The temple of Baal comes crashing to the earth. Well, here's the thing. Donald Trump's rise began in the summer of 2015 when he announced his race for president for the presidency. Summer of 2015. That temple of Baal had existed for 2,000 years, just about. After 2,000 years, the temple of Baal came crashing to the earth in the summer of 2015. As the warrior rose... The mm. Temple of Baal crashed to the earth. I mean, who could put that together? I mean, who could put that together but God? Amen. Amazing. Amazing. And this is going to take us to where we are right now. You know, where we are. Now, in the paradigm, in the book, and in the, in the, in the album, the BB album, it goes into the future. And, 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 what is, and, and, and what do we have to think about when we deal with the future? And now? let me just stop yeah, and sure. offer this do product. It. Yeah, I, I'm sure you've been fascinated, as I have, by Jonathan Kahn's insights into what he's calling the paradigm. We want to make these available to you so you can dig deeper, learn more, get a better grasp, and just really be amazed at uh, the mighty hand of our God. This is all in the book, uh, The Paradigm, and it's, it's called The Ancient Blueprint That Holds the Mystery of Our Times. Uh, the book's for twenty one ninety five plus shipping and handling. 
but also there are DVD sets, and uh, there are two, and each one, album one and album two, each have four hours of teaching on DVD. This is called Uncensored. This is the Paradigm Uncensored. It has things that I could not even put. The book is explosive, right. but I cannot even put in the book that I put there just for, for these who are going to hear it, things that I could not say, and, and from Veil right. to the Covenants to things that could just not be anywhere else. So it's it's eight. It's I'm sharing eight DVD albums. There's pictures and images, so it's you can't get this anywhere. I mean, anywhere. You can't get this in a bookstore. Eight hours that elaborates and unfolds more. Uh, each one of these is $29.95. Uh, you can get this together as a package for sixty nine ninety five plus shipping and handling. And if you do, do that, we're going to throw in his first book, The Harbinger. So as always, go to our website, prophecyinthenews.com, or call the 800 number on your screen, and one of our friendly people will help you place your order. You need to have this material. It's going to be a, an incredible challenge and blessing and an eye-opener, I think, for a lot of people. And it's cool that, because I, I come here, I don't know, you know how it's all arranged, but, uh -huh. but I saw it as, you, as we, we had the program, but... But it's cool that you have the Harbinger in there, too. If they, if they have it, they can, they can give it to friends. Sure. But what, why I'm saying that is because the two mysteries are going to intersect with each other. And we're going to see it Absolutely. as we talk now you know, with this. Yeah, the future. Well, well you know, we don't want to put God in a box. You know, I'm always cautious. I don't want to ever put God in a box Tell that God has to do something right. or how it's going to correlate. But do we have clues here now about, from the paradigm about the future? You know. Uh, a few things. First of all, I'll tell you this. The paradigm, we can't go into all of it. We can just touch all of this. We're just touching the surface of what, what we have. But, uh, but the paradigm actually it gives a warning. Jehu is commended for what he did. He's commended. But he's also rebuked of it because mm -hmm. there's, there's a mix. It's a mix. Jehu's a mix. In fact, in, in fact what, what, I'll just say this. You know, it's, it's, here we are two and a half thousand years later, more than that. And the, to this day, anybody, I, I, I can, you have a, here's an assignment. Go to a commentary, read about we, what the commentary says about Jehu. Because two and a half thousand years later, the commentaries cannot make heads or tails, cannot decide <laughs> what to make of Jehu. I mean, that's pretty amazing after two and a half thousand years. Some say, this guy's great. He's the best. Guy. Some say, uh, the guy was, the guy was not, didn't know God and he did all these, these ridiculous things. Well, <laughs> then, then, then you, you'll find it just like Trump. I mean, uh -huh. you, you know, he, he's controversy. But the thing is that, but, but what you will see about in Christian commentaries is that they will be agreed and in that Jehu was used of God. And so one thing about Trump is he's, he, he's controversy. We, we know that. And, and believers were torn, you know, you know up, up until the time that it became uh, between the two. Right. But the thing, is that, the thing is that it is clear. Can God use people who don't know him? Yes, he can. Sure God he is sovereign. And sometimes you know, one of the commentaries says it's interesting. You'll find amazing. I believe there are things that people will find in the paradigm that I didn't put in here. Uh -huh. it's, oh, they'll find things that are, that are beyond. But you read the commentaries and they will say that, that Jay, maybe it took a man like Jehu to be able to do what he had to do with ending the house of Ahab. So sometimes it takes a, a buddy who's a bit wild sometimes to do things that other people wouldn't do. You know? But the thing is that there is a warning. Because Je cause Jehu is, does God's will by ending the house of, end, ending the temp, the worship of Baal or the or the cult of Baal at least at least in the capital he he he, he does it but he compromises as well he all he, he doesn't does. he doesn't turn away from the idolatry of Jeroboam he kind of goes away he he opposes the foreign sin which is which is Baal worship but the national the more nationalistic one which was that idol of Jeroboam from the other that's nationalism that he he ends up going with nationalism even when it's against God. So it ends up being a, a mix, a mix. But here's the thing. So, so let's. So it's, the answer is not Donald Trump. The answer wasn't Jehu. The answer is God. And the thing is that we can't we can't put Amen. our trust in anything. But but the thing is, here's the important thing. And actually, when you look at the the overall picture, what happens is the the long term descent in Israel does it ends up it ends up continuing. Even though Jehu slowed it down, he gave them a, a time period which we're we're going we're to go to. But it ends up the, the nation didn't turn around, didn't have revival. So therefore, it ends up going to the, it intersects with the harbingers. The harbingers are the signs of when judgment comes. So Jehu's actually reign, when you keep going, it's going to go to the harbingers. So they actually, they intersect with each other. But here's the, here's the important thing right now. What the importance of Jehu, what the paradigm is telling us, is that Jehu provides a window. And that is that if it went the other way, that it would have been sealed. If that election went the other way, it, we would have been a whole different story right mm -hmm. now. But, but the election of Donald Trump, even despite Donald, Donald Trump wasn't planning it, but God planned. God has never finished, and that is he's given, it's a window, where religious freedom is still there, where the Supreme Court is still there, not, not totally against, against us, 
where we have a window now. The answer is in the poli- if, if it's just political, that then we're lost. Because if America doesn't have a revival, if it's not a spiritual revival turning culture, then America is going to head down rapidly the road of destruction. You know, that's judgment. That's where the harvest is coming. But we've got a window now. And if we've got a window, the window is for revival. The answer is revival. Amen. It still holds if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. That is still good. But if we squander this, we have, we have, we have lost. We have, to, we have to labor for revival as never before. We've got to pray for revival as never before. We have to not just do that. We have to start living in revival. Because if we'll live in revival, revival is now. And so this is the time. And there's a, there's a part of the paradigm, which there's a, inside the paradigm, there's actually a paradigm in the paradigm, which is for God's people specifically, which tells us the keys of how to respond successfully, how to prevail at such a time as this, how to fulfill your calling, because God has a paradigm for your life. How to fulfill that. And the, I'll just tell you this. We won't have Please. time. The, the paradigm is called the Elijah paradigm, because Elijah's in the paradigm. And the key is, I will just say this, I can't go through the keys that are in there, but to say this, it's not the time to get timid. It's not the time to get complacent. It's not the time to get status quo. Hey, we're okay. This is the time to get more radical than ever. Elijah was radical. He was revolutionary. He was not status quo. He says, I don't care what you say. I don't care about political correctness. I'm going with God. Amen. And I don't care. I don't care. Let the chips fall where they, may, where they may. I'll go with God. The thing is that it is time to be the candle in the night. If we are, God's eyes are searching everyone, looking for the heart that is completely his. And that one that will be the candle in the night will light up the world. We sing, these are the days of Elijah. These are the, well, they are the days of Elijah. But if these are the days of Elijah, it is time that at last we, me, you, everyone watching, that we become the Elijahs of the day. Amen. Amen. You just take me to, uh, you know, the brook that uh, Elisha stood at. Yes. And he, he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Yes. And he took the mantle and smote the water and walked across. And yes. I that's remember what we need. Leonard Ravenhill made a statement years ago. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Yes. He's waiting on Elijah to call on him. Yes. I that's love the key. It. To I, love, I love it. I love it. These, these are the days and these, these can be are. our greatest times. God has a plan. And I want to say, you know, if we're seeing that God has a plan so incredible, so, so minute, so precise for America. He's got a plan for Amen. each of us. And that's when he says, I know the plans I have. That Hebrew word means intricate. So God has a plan, but you've got to go all out for God. If you're going to see what God has for your life and God has for this hour, go all out and God will do it. You'll be the Elijah. Amen. Said so well. Jonathan Kahn, our guest. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. I just want to say, if, uh, if uh, you're going to go all out for God, it starts with getting all in. <laughs> and if you've never come to Jesus, do it. We want you to know him so that we can keep looking up till he returns.